Hey guys, I'm Aaron, and this is SketchUp Square One, where we take a look at the fundamentals of SketchUp. Today, we're going to go a little bit further with the concept of components. Last week, we talked about the basics, about what is a component, how does it work. Today, we're going to dive a little bit deeper and see some of the options you have when you create components. With that, let's go ahead and hop right in. Okay, so I did create some geometry ahead of time. Um, I didn't think we had the time to sit and watch me model all this stuff. So uh, I have a bunch of examples here. One of the things I am going to open is the components window. So this is a default window when you install SketchUp. So on Mac, it's floating over here. On Windows, it'll be part of the default tab bar. If it's not turned on on Mac, you can go up to window and turn on components. And like I said on Windows, you will just scroll down through the default tab bar so you find components and expand it. So I'm gonna open it up here. Um, the other thing I wanna click on is this home button right here. So by clicking on home, it's showing me all the components that are currently in this model. Right now there are none, that's why it's an empty screen. But uh, we'll see as we start creating components, they'll populate this list over here. This is actually one of the things that set components apart from groups is groups, while they can be seen something like the instructor, are not part of the component list. So that'll make a little more sense as we start modeling here. Okay, so I have a couple things modeled here. Um, they're all fairly monotone, but here I have a picture frame. So different from a window, you can see, because a window you can see through, a picture frame you can't. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to group select. I could also come in here and triple click, one, two, three. Um, get all that connected geometry selected. And I'm going to right click and say make component. Same as we did before. Real simple. Um, in here, I am going to put in a definition because when this gets saved, it's going to be referred to by whatever I put here in this definition. So I'm just going to call this a picture frame. So that I spelled it right in everything. Um, the description, you can add this. It's not as important. The definition is absolutely important because it'll help you find this in your component list. Our component list is gonna be fairly short, but in a full model, I might have maybe 20, 30, 40, 100, 200 different components. So it does, uh, it is worth a few seconds to put in a definition here that's gonna help you find this later on. Description's not quite as important. This is more if this model's going out to someone else and you want them to reference something, if, uh, uh, you want to tell them why you made it, where you made it, that sort of thing. That's important. Same with the advanced attributes at the bottom. We touched on these briefly. Uh, if you do want, if you're distributing this file and you want somebody to be able to come to a website or something like that, put it that in the URL um, field down here. But for right now, I'm just going to leave it blank. Okay, so the thing we're going to look at here is this block of options that is titled alignment. So we have a couple options here. We're gonna start at the top. We're gonna to look at glue two. So what glue two says is that I can take this thing and have it automatically snap to faces. So there's actually options under here. So I can glue two none. This is the default that says when you put it in, it's just gonna go in your model. And if you wanna move it on a surface, you just do that like you would any other geometry. By turning glue two, one of these on, it will automatically snap to geometry. So there's a couple options here. We can say only snap to horizontal geometry. So if I was like making a, a pencil cup and I always wanted to sit on top of a desk, something like that, I could say horizontal. Vertical actually works very well for something like a picture frame or a window because that's the surfaces they're normally in. And then sloped would be something where, uh, I don't know, maybe I'm modeling a skylight or a chimney or something like that. I don't know, where I always want it to be snapped onto a slope geometry. In this case, I'm just gonna turn on any so we can see what that does. All right, when we click any, uh, you see that something changed there. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it back to none. See, when we have it set to none, it shows us what our axis is for this component. So when this gets created, this point right here is gonna be basically zero, zero, and my red, green, and blue axis align to the world axis right here. That's the default. If I wanna change it, I can say set component axis, and I can come pick a different point and pick the red and green direction. Blue is assumed once I set two, the third one goes the opposite way. When I come in here and I say glue two, there's an important change. Watch what happens down here. So watch, watch where I have my axis. When I change to any, look what happened to my axis. It changed. It went from the blue line straight up to an X, a flat X, and I got this little gray box around here. What it just did 
was it just went in and assigned the surface of this component that is going to glue to other geometry. So it set that bottom. We're not going to want to keep this, but I'm going to go ahead and hit create and see what happens. All right, so a couple things happen here. One, this did get created into a component. Two, over in my components list, I have that. Now, look at that thumbnail. That's not a great thumbnail. What it's doing is it's looking straight at it against the that surface we created. Remember, we said the bottom, this is the gluing surface right down here. We're looking at it opposite that. So when we look at the thumbnail here, this is what it's showing us. Looking straight down like uh, that. See, see this? Now you see the similarities, right? So watch what happens now when I grab this and I bring it in to put it on. See that? It snapped the bottom right on there. So I'm going to hover one over here. We'll flip around this side, this side. It's that's not how I want a picture frame to behave, right? That's not right. That is not right. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and undo a couple times. I'm going to hit Command Z until I've unmade that component. We're going to do it one more time. So I'm going to go select, right click, make component. Again, I'm going to call this picture frame. I'm going to go to glue two and say any. And then before I hit OK this time, I'm going to say set component axis. And I'm going to spin around. And see that, see that what's following my cursor? So I'm going to come in here and say, well, I don't want the front. I want the back to be aligned. And then in order to change the orientation here, I'm going to run my red up and my green over. And look what that does. That changes the blue axis to be this back. And that gray panel shows up on the back, which is the part I want to snap onto other surfaces. So with that, I'm going to hit Create. And a couple things happen. Look, my thumbnail makes a lot more sense right now, right? Because I'm looking straight at it. And if I click and drag that on here, look what happens. I'm dragging from the lower left corner and it's aligning its back to whatever surface I hover over. This is correct. That is how I would want to do that. I probably wouldn't want to put a picture frame on the roof of a house, but eh, it's not much of a house. Okay, so let's keep going. Let's look at how to make a cutting component. I'm going to grab all this geometry that makes up this little window here, and I'm going to right click, make component. Again, I want to give it a name, window. I am going to say glue to, and this is only going to go on vertical surfaces. I am going to set my component axis again, same thing, I'm going to spin around to the back. I'm going to choose this back corner, I'm going to put red up, green to the side, that gives me my, my surface on the back. And I'm going to turn on cut, cut opening. And I'm going to hit create. All right, so that gets created over in my component browser. I have that window there. I'm going to click and I'm going to drag that on here. And again, so this is, a, this is the big difference, right? Is if I hover over a surface that's not a vertical surface, look, my glue two turns off. So it's only going to show up like this if I hover over a vertical surface. I can go vertical in different directions, but if I hover over a slope surface or a horizontal surface, it's not going to glue to it. Now, here's the cool part. Once I go to a surface I like and I click to place it, ooh, it cuts a hole in the wall. So it does put a hole. That hole actually extends the full length of the frame. So let me show you what I'm talking about. I'm going to poke my head in here and take a little bit of... Uh, gesture moving around, but I'm going to get inside here. There we go. Use my hand to pan down. It's actually cutting. So you can see this blue surface is the inside. So it's actually cutting all the way to the outside. So it's not just the windows that are the holes that are cut out. It's actually the entirety of that component. So if I was to do something like move this, watch this, and move it off kind of halfway off. Look, it only cuts up to that half. Now, something you may see with glued components is sometimes they act a little bit weird. So um, if I was to come in here and uh, hit like the red axis, I, I just hit the right angle. So I should be snapping away, but it's not snapping away. It's doing this weird thing that, look at that red line's not staying straight like it should when it snap. The issue is because this is glued, it's gonna have a hard time moving off the surface. If I wanna take this component and take it off the wall, what I will have to do is right click and click unglue. Once I do that, it unbreaks the wall and I can move it anywhere I want along any axis. All right, I'm gonna put it back where it was because I liked it cutting in a hole there. All right, we've got a couple more things to look at. So here I have Sumele, but unlike the way we normally see her, 
she is a load of geometry right now. She's actually exploded out of her normal component container. So I'm going to do another group select. I'm going to select all of Sumele. I'm going to right click and say make component. Again, here we'll come up here. We'll put Sumele in here. Um, I'm not going to play with glue to this time. We're going to look at always face camera. So you see these scale figures, you know that when you spin around, when you orbit around, they always face towards you. That is because this always face camera is turned on. Now the important thing about always face camera is it doesn't know what face should be facing towards you. It doesn't care what geometry you decide is the face. What SketchUp's going to do is take the red axis. See this red line right here? That's what's going to face towards the camera. So I'm going to go ahead and hit create and immediately you'll see Sumele snap. See, so she's always facing me now. She's not facing me. The red axis in the component is facing me. So if I hit Control Z to unmake that component, I'll come in again, select the geometry, right click, make component, and watch this. If I come in here and say set component and I change the red axis to running backwards like that, watch what happens when I create that with always face camera turned on. Ooh, Sumel is facing away from me. I'm getting the cold shoulder now. It sees this as the red axis and is always pointing that towards me. So that's not ideal either, obviously. So I'm going to undo that one last time. Let's select all of Sumele, right click, make component, Sumele, and always face camera with that red line in the front. And that behaves as we expect. Now, a lot of times we do these face me components with 2D geometry because they save, it saves geometry, right? Because to put uh, Sumele with all, if this was a 3D model, um, it would have a lot of polygons. It would weigh down our model. But as a 2D component, she's always facing me. So she, I always get the, the appearance of a human being. She's never going to turn sideways and turn into a line. But I don't have to only do it with, with 3D geometry if, or 2D geometry. I could do it with 3D also. So if I grab this stop sign right here, just as an example, and I say make component, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to say sign one because I'm going to make a couple of these. Always face camera. I'm going to change my component axis so that it's, it's actually on the geometry right here. And that red line is facing me. That's the front. So I'm going to go ahead and hit create. And look what happens now. Along with Sumele, that stop sign is stalking me. It's always looking at me, always watching. Very cool. You notice there's one more thing in there. So if I got, I got one more sign here, I'm going to grab it, right click, make component. And again, this is going to be sign two, always face camera. There's this shadows face sun. I'm going to turn that off. And I'm going to set my component axis. Same thing, I'm going to put it right here at this front corner. Same, same as I've done this one. And say create. So as far as always face camera, there is no difference to how that works. But if I turn on shadows, if I go over here to my shadow settings, again, in Mac, I can see that under Windows shadows. If you're on a Windows machine, it will be part of the default tab bar. You just have to scroll down to it. I'm going to turn on shadows. So here is that shadows always face sun. Look at Sumele and sign number one. No matter how I spin them, so I spin them around sideways like this, look at my shadows. They're always facing back towards the sun. So they're always going to render shadows as if the sun was, they're, they're facing towards the sun, even though they themselves move around. Look at this guy right here. Sign number two does not have shadows face sun turned on. So as I spin it, the shadow on the ground changes. So this is a nice functionality to have in there, depending on the piece you have. Um, it is nice to have Sumele face towards me, but the downside is that if that was turned off, I would have this thin little line right here, which would represent the sun hitting the side of her 2D component rather than having this realistic human-shaped uh, geometry. You see this, how she's kind of floating away from her, her spot right here? That's because her component is anchored to this point right here. So as I spin around, you can see it spin on that point. If you wanted to line up better with the center of the shadow, you could actually change her middle point to maybe like this toe or something like that, and she'd be spinning off this point rather than this end over here. But those are kind of some more advanced options you can play with with components. Okay, I know that was a lot. That was probably the biggest uh, chunk of information we've ever done in the square one. 
Um, I probably could have broken that into two separate pieces, done glue two by itself, and then faced me in a separate one. But um, if it was too much, go ahead and watch it a second time. We'll take the view. Uh, I hope that helped you out. I, like I said, there's so much to components. They're such a cool and integral part to an efficient workflow inside of SketchUp. It's worth watching a couple extra minutes of it. Um, so yeah, we'll have another one after this still. Well, we're not done with components and groups. We've talked about groups, we've talked about components. Now we need to talk about how they work together and how they're different. That's next week. If you like this video, go ahead and click like down below. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. We create several videos every single week, including one of these Square One videos. You'll be notified of each and every one of them if you subscribe. Most importantly though, more than anything, please leave us a comment down below. Do you like this video? Did I miss something? What do you think we should work on next? We like making these videos a lot, but we like them even more when they're showing something you want to see. Thank you.